Hello everybody, it has been a while, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Welcome to my naked face, because guess what? I think the idea of having to wear makeup is kind of dumb and I'm kind of sick of it. Yeah, I'm gonna rebel because that's what I do. <laughs> that was kind of an unintentionally aggressive intro. But yeah, welcome to my channel. Uh, the, the, the subscribers have been trickling in uh, as of late, so thank you very much if you are new. I really appreciate you. Anyways, today I wanted to share with you something that I have been working on. It's very exciting to me. Stay till the end if you want to see a time lapse of me sketching one of my pages, uh, like, of, of panels. Some of you guys may have watched um, those videos that uh, of me reading my old comics and stories um, that I made as a child, um, and those kind of inspired me. I was thinking, you know, if I can make these as a child, you know, these entertaining but not so good stories as a child, Maybe I can do better now that I'm an adult and doing more adult things, like taxes. This is what happens when you don't write down a script. Anyways, I created these characters. This is after uh, after I played Wander Song. Um, check it out on Twitch, by the way. I played Wander Song, and it's this incredible game, and I love the two main characters so much. It just kind of pushed me like I had to I had this like overwhelming sense of something inside my brain and it just wanted to explode and I had to spill out all this creativity into something so I created these two characters um and I thought hmm why not make a story out of it what kind of stories do I like oh po post-apocalyptic things in the future and like all these like these crazy settings with all this technology and like half the world is dead because of whatever a war a virus i don't know and i have here the um the basic description of the story it's a, the the basic description is very long so it's not going to be like the official one but i thought i could read it to you guys because it's fun <coughs> Pear's life completely sucks, despite having the highest IQ in the biome. The High Council refuses to add her as a member, and her own soul has taken to haunting her. <clears throat> in the process of trying to stop the haunting, she nearly blows up the city, which, naturally, the Council isn't very fond of. So they send in Antity, an emotional invertebrate type with a strange mutation. He takes a liking to Pear and tries atrocities such as talking to her and even invites her to a party. What a jerk, right? All this is enough to drive Pear to leave her beloved home in search of the Fire Blossom, the only thing that can stop her soul from bothering her. Unfortunately, to her dismay, that creep Antony follows her. But will it turn out that all of this is exactly what Pear needs? Oh my gosh. Basically, the idea here is that there's, like, a certain number of people left on the Earth, right? Or whatever planet this is. And so, like, these people banded together and they created this city inside like this dome, and it's called the biome. Um, I have like concept art. Uh, you might not be able to see it very well because it's freaking pencil on notebook, but it's like, you see there's this like dome and like these buildings all inside. It's like a vertical, it's a city that's kind of vertical. It's a city of stairs and ladders and it's floating. Like you can see kind of, there's like dirt here and it's supposed to be like floating in the sky. Basically, no one is allowed to leave. Um, and only a select few are allowed to come in. Um, nobody knows much about the High Council, um, because barely anybody is part of it. Basically, the point is it's supposed to be really sketchy and cult-like and weird. Um, and everybody is under the influence that, oh, this is the best way to live. This is how we should live. This is, um, this is the only way to live. And anyone outside of the biome, uh, is either dead or, like, dying. <laughs> the whole thing is, like, full of freaking metaphors about, like, mental illness and everything. Like, don't read too much into it because you're gonna be confused. Um, by the way, the name that I chose for this book, I think I'm gonna make it a series, probably, of, of some sort. It's called Escape from the Floating City, because it's a floating city. Book one is called On the Subject of Souls. And here's a drawing I did on notebook paper, of course, because what else would I use? And not like I'd use sketch paper for sketching. This is supposed to be, like, cover, what I want to use for, like, the cover. This is Pear, the main character. Um, there's the fire blossom. This is Anthony. He has, a uh, 
years. He's not a furry. I, I mean, I'm not a furry, I swear. And here's her, like, soul. I'm gonna change the... I'm gonna change this a little bit. I want you to be able to see, like, the creepy smiling mouth in the background a bit more. And here's the main, like, villain. I would say she's not really the true antagonist, because the true antagonist in this book is the soul, and overall is the whole biome situation. In the biome, what controls everyone is the Order. I'm not sure if the Order is a specific entity or if it's just a concept yet. It's kind of barely referenced, um, or lightly referenced in the first story that I created. I don't know, I'm just, I'm gonna figure it out as I go along. I, I feel like that's not the way that you're supposed to make stories, but I can do whatever I want because I'm an artist. More concept art, this is the villain. Her name is Annihilation, of course, because what else would it be? Um, and there's Pear. You know, she's short. Here's Pear and Antony out in the wilderness, and he's like, can you just conjure us up some food? And she's like, I'm a genius, not a magician. Have realistic expectations for me. Random side characters. My first sketch of what Pear's house is gonna look like. There's doors and a shed and rocks and things. My first drawing of our villain. Annihilation, just testing out the colors. Here she is again. I absolutely love her design and her colors. I'm really excited about her. The Those three standing near each other. See, I imagine him being like six-ish feet tall. I don't know. And she's like way taller than him. Working on like color concepts here. Trying to figure out like, hmm, what crazy colors should I make the main characters? I think this is interesting because I have to use like really neutral tones for their clothing. Um, which I quite like. I like the idea of having, like, weird skin tones and subtle, uh, clothing colors. I think it's, I think it's interesting. It's fun, it's very fun to draw. It's like really flipping things around. Skip a little bit forward to avoid some spoilers about the villain. I'll put it somewhere. I mean, it's not like huge spoilers, but like, and also, uh, blood and gore warning. Um, the villain here, she gets her arm blown off by Pear, one of Pear's inventions, and it becomes the subject of guilt for Pear because she's like, well, she was trying to kill us, but, like, I literally just blew her arm off. And here she is with her mechanical arm, which, uh, isn't actually going to be in the first book, I think. And her mechanical arm, of course, doubles as a gun, um, obviously. Because, like, if you're gonna have a mechanical arm, if you're gonna be a cyborg, why not be, like, a freaking, like, terrifying robot cyborg? Here's my folder of ideas. <laughs> Everything that I've written is in here. I think I'm holding it upside down. It's all in here. <sighs> I'm so happy. Um, let us see. And of course, I have a little dedication right here that's for anyone who has ever faced loneliness, because that's kind of the whole theme, the main, like, theme, I guess, of this, uh, facing loneliness and how these characters have dealt with it in the past and them learning healthy ways to deal with it. So we start out with Antony at his, like, office job. Um, very vague, you know, there isn't really a lot, it's just... It's an office job, and he's really bad at it, basically. And he's about to be fired and sent to, to the mines, which everybody tries to avoid being sent to. But his boss is like, fine, I, I won't fire you. I'll give you one last chance. I'm going to send you to work with this creative, as, she, uh, as they're called, um, which is Pear. Um, and he's basically, he's sent there as a watcher, which means that he is trying to make sure she doesn't cause trouble, uh, or blow up the entire city. This is one of my, um, favorite pages in the entire book. It's when they first meet, um, <laughs> and I just, I really like it. Like, he startles Pear while she's working on something, and she is so pissed about it. She is literally so angry, which of course leads to her hating Antony from the beginning. Um, causes a lot of problems. She basically ends up tricking him and pranking him with like any invention she can to try and drive him away or just for laughs, I don't know. And and he hates it, He he's sick of it, but like anything's better than the mines, am I right guys? The very first part of the book is a little bit about like how they end up tolerating each other. Antony learns to like Pear a lot quicker than she learns to tolerate him. Um, basically, at one point, he brings her to this party, and 
it does not go well for her, let's just say. Um, and her soul ends up appearing and giving her a haunting and she just, she freaks out and she's like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I need to get out of here. I don't fit in. I need to leave. I need to find the fire blossoms so that I can get rid of this thing. And so the next day, she's like packing her stuff. She's packing her stuff. She's getting ready to leave. And Antony's like, what the heck are you doing? And she's like, well, I'm leaving the biome. And he's like, what? You, what? You're literally going to die. And she's like, I don't care. I won't be missed and all this dramatic crap. Um, but you know, she really feels that way. So she's not doing it just for the sake of being dramatic. Although she is very manipulative. That's part of her character. Basically, she ends up leaving... Uh, sneaking out and Antony follows her and it's not that difficult the you know the difficulty comes later when um, when the intercessor uh, Antony's boss finds out that they're missing um, and he sends annihilation after them you know basically she tries to kill them because her name is annihilation they fight back uh, things do not go well for Annihilation. You know, they get away pretty much unharmed for now. A lot of it kind of uh, focuses on their interactions with each other, you know, them learning to live in the outside world, discovering new things, discovering, hey, like, why were we cooped up in the biome for so long? Just asking questions like, why, why did we think that that this is the best way to live. Is it really the best way to live? Questioning like what happiness is, questioning why they're here, what they're doing, um, why they were stuck in the biome in the first place, and like why why is the order so important? Like is the order, d does the order really have our best interest in mind? And like I'm trying to do like these crazy like artistic background things here of like these massive stone hands literally like throughout the entire story nobody references them nobody acknowledges them um not a hundred percent sure what that well actually i have lots of ideas but i'm not i'm not ready to share them yet but basically they're left over from a war essentially so i decided that there would be like giant insects in this world um, and that's mainly what Pear and Antony end up eating for their entire, uh, journey. Because, like, that's what there is. There's lots of insects. I kind of like to imagine that, uh, insects are a big part of the culture in the floating city. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. And there's a lot of them outside as well. One of my favorite parts in the story is when Pear has this dream, this, like, nightmare. You know, kind of because of her soul and everything with her soul. Basically, it's about guilt without spoiling too much. You know, there's a lot of guilt and um, you see there's a focus on hands. I I'm not really sure a hundred percent why I did that, but there's a lot of hands in this book. You'll probably notice. But I'm gonna do like lots of colors because there's like stars and like all this stuff. You guys know I like drawing stars. I don't know why. Like I've never really had an obsession with space or anything, but for some reason like now, I just, whenever I draw, I need to include a sky or like a moon or like a star. By the way, Pear's soul uh, is one of my favorite characters. She's just so like obnoxious. That's probably the right word to use. She's like so weirdly evil and manipulative. Like, I know what's best for you, Pear. I've got your back, Pear. I'm the only one you can trust. Everyone else is dangerous except for me. Um, and all that kind of thing. Uh, and there's this one scene, which I haven't really fully drawn, I guess. It's just like, Pear is like trying to take a bath and her soul is bothering her. And she's like, go away, you freaking frick. I, d I don't want to talk to you right now. And her soul is like, ah, silly human, fine, but I'll leave you with this thought. Happiness is a lie and you will never achieve it. Bye. And I, I just love I just love her character because she's so ridiculous and like over the top. Basically the climax of this book is the whole process of her severing her soul from her body and it is quite intense if I do say so myself. So I'm going to avoid showing you any of those drawings because of spoilers and all that. But yeah, I, I think it's a fairly interesting concept. My only worry is that it is too chaotic um, because there's kind of lots of different types of things going on. Like, it's not just about her soul. It's not just about her friendship with Antony. It's just kind of like, it's a lot of things. Um, and 
you know, the whole thing with the biome and stuff. But I kind of, I'm hoping that these are just kind of overarching themes that, I'm hoping that I can blend them together well, is what I mean. But either way, even if it's not really a great story or written perfectly or whatever, um, I think I can definitely confidently call this art, um, an art that people will probably enjoy, even if it's not perfect, because that's what art is. It's imperfect. I'm super excited about this story. I'm super excited about these characters and these drawings. It's so much fun. I loved, I, I loved writing the story and I love, like, I'm loving polishing uh, the drawings and creating the panels and everything. It's so much fun. I'm beyond excited to start coloring this um, because it's, it's just going to look freaking amazing, um, in my opinion. So yeah, just please, um, please subscribe because I'm going to be uh, talking about updates for this and everything. And so like, I'm going to publish it online somewhere somehow. And uh, I'll like give you guys the links when that happens. I just, I really wanted to share this with someone because I am so excited. Like this has been a dream of mine since I was like five years old and now it's finally starting to happen. And like, I, I really hope that like, if you're interested, please, just support me. I don't know. Check it out once it's finished. Uh, it's gonna be it's it's gonna be so exciting. Um, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you. Next